Let's start the sample problems with numbers three through six. We're just going to talk about all of them. <clears throat> Number three says that f of x is equal to three times three fourths to the x. And they want to know is this exponential growth when you graph it? Is it going to look like this? Or is it exponential decay? It's going to look like this. How do we know? Um, well, it was growth because this, this number was getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we raised it to a power of an x. Uh, so it would need to be a number that would get bigger, I mean, it's like a 2. A 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's going to get bigger. What about 3 fourths, though? If I multiply 3 fourths by 3 fourths, then my new number is 3 fourths of 3 fourths, which is even smaller than 3 fourths. And then 3 fourths of that for the next one, so it's getting even smaller and smaller. So again, when a number is less than 1, when it's between 0 and 1, uh, and you're raising it to the x, that's going to be a decay problem. Because this guy right here is between 0 and 1. Let's look at 4. f of x equals. Uh, let's look at this one. Uh, it's a fraction, so you think maybe it's a decay. But look closely. This is 5 halves. This is more than 1. 1 is 2 halves. This is 5 halves. This is uh, 2 and a half. So we, when we multiply these two things together, they're going to get bigger. I'm going to have a bigger and bigger and bigger number. So this number is bigger than 1. So we're going to have uh, a growth, exponential growth. We get number 5. f of x equals 2 7 times 4 to the x. If you're, if you're asked, is it growth or is it decay, all that matters is this. It doesn't even matter what this is. It matters only here. This guy is bigger than 1, so this is growth. OK? And the last one, 6, f of x, 25 times 0.25 to the x. Doesn't matter. Not significant in trying to figure out, is it growth or decay? All that matters is this. This is between 0 and 1. You're going to multiply it by itself a bunch of times, and it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is a decay as well. Okay, so always look to this number. Is it growth or decay? All depends on this guy right here. <coughs> um, number seven. Y equals one fourth to the x. Uh, that's a little too easy. Let's do number thirteen. A little more challenging. Y equals 3 fifths to the x. OK. There we go. I know it's going to be this like this, because it's decay. This is less than 1, so it's going to be decay. Uh, we could try a, a table of values. Um, try 1, 2, 0, negative 1, negative 2. Uh, so I put in a 1, 3 fifths to the 1. That's easy, 3 fifths. Uh, square that 3 fifths squared. That's going to be 3 squared, 9, over 5 squared, 25. 9 20 fifths, pretty small. All right? Uh, then to the 0, anything to the 0 again is 1. So 0, comma 1, always. Uh, 3 fifths to the negative 1. Hopefully you notice that when we've done this a fraction to the negative 1 a few times, all that winds up happening is that the fraction gets flipped over. It's 5 thirds. So this is 5 thirds. Uh, how about this one, negative 2? 3 fifths to the negative 2. Well, the negative part of it is just going to have the flipping effect. That's going to be 5 thirds squared. And so that's going to be. 25 over 9. That's just the reciprocal of that guy. That's no coincidence. 25 over 9. So 0, 1. Uh, 1, comma 3 fifths. That's uh, right there. 2, comma 9, 20 fifths. Way down here. Uh, see, negative 1, 5 thirds. So here's 3 thirds, 4, 5 thirds. And negative 2 and 25 ninths. Uh, let's see, let's see, uh, so that is a little more than 2, it's right around in here, okay, so let's sketch it out. Maybe that one should have been a little higher, but 
gives me a good idea. Okay, so I could plot a few points, but you'll notice 0 comma 1, always going to have a 0 comma 1. If it's just a number raised to, a, to x, then 0 comma 1, that's what's going to happen. Um, at 1, you just have, hey, the number. At <coughs> negative 1, you have the reciprocal of the number. Okay, so that pattern is always going to carry through. If it's just a number to the x, not, not, not x plus 1 or x minus 3, but just a number to the x power, that pattern is going to carry through. Okay, um, so let's try another. After 13, we'll move on to, let's try number 18. y equals 2 times 1 third to the x plus 1 minus 3. OK. Let's remember what we just learned. Graph this, this basic guy here. And uh, um, well, let's just do 1 third to the x, and then we'll adjust it with the plus 1. Right? OK. So 1 third to the x, we, we've already learned this. This is going to be 0 comma 1 is going to be a key point, 1 comma the number, 1 third. And then negative 1 comma the reciprocal of the number. The reciprocal of 1 third would be 3. So here's our basic floor model of this function. Um, next, what should we do? Well, I, the next thing that happens is x plus 1, right? Something adds to 1. What, is, what happens when you add or subtract something directly to the x? It does a horizontal shift in the opposite direction of the sign. So to the left 1, to the left 1, to the left 1 and to the left one. So here we go, here's another transformation this thing is going through. Then it gets multiplied by 2, that means every point is twice as high as it used to be. So this goes to 2 thirds, and this goes to 2, and this goes to 6, 4, 5, 6, there. So stretched out, that's what happened. It didn't move up, it stretched. Okay, so here's our latest one. This one uh, has moved to the left and has been stretched by 2. And now the last thing that happens is subtract 3. So it goes down. I'm going to have to mess with the scale here. It goes down 3. So down here is our new asymptote. Okay, x-axis is still here. This is the x-axis. But this is our new asymptote. Uh, so everything gets moved down 3. So 1, 2, 3. It gets moved down back here. And this one is going to move down three. Oh, let's see, this one went through here. So one, two, three. It's going to look kind of weird because I had to squish these together. Um, then this one comes down one, two, three, right there ish. Okay. So remember, this one, one, two, three. So it's right here. It actually goes through the same point. Kind of a coincidence. And this is, this is everything that happens to this graph. So. There we go, make it solid. There is our, go further here. There's our exponential decay graph. All right, it's number 18. Let's do one more, just for good measure. Uh, just one more simple graphing one, and then we'll do some uh, maybe word problems, if you're lucky. h of x is equal to 4 times 1 half to the x plus 1. OK. Uh, all right, so let's graph the 1 half to the x. OK, we know the crucial points, 0 comma 1, and 1 comma 1 half, and negative 1 comma the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. All right, so there's our starter. Then what happens? It moves to the left 1, to the left 1. And that will be right there. So to the left 1 looks, uh, let's see what I do around here. Nothing, I guess. Just maybe my scale's a little off or something. OK, so all those got moved to the left one. Now we have a new thing. And then they get multiplied by 4. They all go 4 higher than they were. So we know this one was at half. So it goes up to 2. And this one was at 1. So it goes up to 3, 4. This one was at 2, so it's going to be at 8. That's going to put it right up here. Okay. 
Uh, so here we have our points here, here, and here. So let's make sure the scale's a little off. Let's make this point over here. All right, so here it comes down like this. Got, got all sorts of stretched out there. Okay. So what happened? We, we graphed our 1 half to the x, we moved it over to the left one, and we multiplied by 4, which means that it gets 4 times taller than it used to be. Okay, let's look at... Um, so in the last section, we talked about something that increases by a per certain percentage, and we call that compound interest. Now we're going to talk about something that, you know, you could probably guess it's going to not go up, not increase by a certain percentage, but decrease by a certain percentage. Okay, so let's look at number 31. Uh, you buy a bike, and it costs $200. Uh, now, things usually don't appreciate. They don't usually uh, get more expensive as they get older. Uh, sometimes they do, but it's very rare. So, you know, if you try to sell this bike later, you're not going to get $200 for it. Uh, not exactly the way that it is. It's used, it's dirty, uh, it smells, and uh, for some reason... Uh, your bike smells, uh, and, and nobody wants it. They don't want to pay as much as $200 for it. So um, the, what we're uh, approximating here for 31 is that the value of the bike decreases 25% each year. So let's look for a second. Let's take 200. And, you know, it's going to be worth less the next year. How much is it going to be worth next year? Well, if it loses 25% of its value, then it's gonna, it's gonna be worth 75%, right? It loses 25%, but it maintains 75%. So next year is 75% of what it was worth the year before. Uh, so, well, so it's 150, yes, $150 next year that you could get for this bike uh, after it's depreciated a little bit. Um, okay, what about the next year? Well, this is what it's worth. Uh, you know, after one year, after two years, well, here's my my price after two years or after one year of depreciation. Now it's going to be worth 75% of that. It's going to be worth 75% of that the next year, and so on and so on. Okay, so in general, I, I mean, how do we even get 75%? Well, it's what's you know the the rest of 100%. You know, it's going to depreciate 25%, so we know that it's still worth the rest of 100%, which is 75%. So we took 200, we multiplied it by 1 minus uh, 0.25, the depreciation rate. And, um, and we can see that you know, this is 0.75. We keep multiplying by 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. So we're just going to raise it to you know, how many years are you going to let this thing depreciate and then try and sell it? That's, that's what we do there. We just take the initial amount that it's worth. And then we multiply it by you know the the rest of what's left after you take your your depreciation away from 100 percent, and raise that to the number of years. Okay, um, so if we were to simplify this a little bit, 200. This is like in general, right? You're always going to take one minus the depreciation rate, but this is 0.75 to the t. That's part a. That's what they wanted us to do for part a. <clears throat> they want us to graph the model now. Okay, this. Use a graphing calculator. There's, these numbers are so big, um, but it's going to look, you know, something like this. Um, it's going to start out at, you know, this would be 200 at year zero, and it's just going to get less expensive from there, worth less. Um, now, it, now that part C says, when will the bike be um, worth a hundred dollars? You know, half of of what it's worth now. So when will, you know, how many years will it take? Uh, you multiplying this by 0.75 a bunch of times um, for it to be worth two point, or no, sorry, a hundred dollars, okay? Oh, well, okay, let, let's divide by 200 on both sides. So 0.75 to the T equals uh, one half. Well, gosh, I mean, this. How do I solve for this t? I mean, maybe you have the idea to take the tth root of this. We just got done with exponents. Maybe you take the tth root, like you would take the third root of something. I'll be right back.